Hello, I'm Ken McEwen, KI4OCO, Oscar Tango Oscar. And what we've got here today is a demonstration antenna which shows the relationship of several basic antennas. Uh, they are all fed with straight coax line. Uh, when we get the center conductor down at eye level, you'll be able to see the, uh, the center of the antenna down at eye level. You'll be able to see that there's no special hardware up there or anything like that. This is probably what a lot of folks would call a budget antenna. This particular one is designed for 10 meters. Uh, the uh, frequency, I mean the formula for calculating the length of an antenna like this is the length in feet is equal to 468 over the frequency and the frequency is in megahertz. Um, since their frequency is a component, as the frequency gets lower, the antenna is going to get a lot longer in feet. This same formula is applicable as in this one for 10 meter band, uh, 20 meters, 15 meters, any other band that you care to choose on down to 160 meters, which is uh, rather lengthy. But uh, let me get into the antenna itself and show you what we've got going here. Okay, uh, it is a basic dipole antenna, meaning uh, there are two sides to it, uh, split in the center with an insulator here, and this is our feed point. Let me drop it down just a moment so we can get a little closer to it. This is our center insulator here. Uh, it separates the two halves of the antenna from each other. It also gives us a place to tie the coaxial cable. If you can zoom in on this closely, you can see that the coaxial cable is looped up and over the insulator and then tied back down for a good mechanical support. Uh, the center conductor goes over to this side and the uh, side, uh, the shield goes to the other side. I've got multiple conductors on both sides here for demonstration purposes and we'll get into that shortly. This is the center conductor, I mean the center of our antenna and the insulator. The wires are just pieces of wire that I scrounge from various projects, <laughs> probably hook up wire or something like that. It's about uh, 22 gauge. Um, if you were making a permanent antenna like this, you would want to go heavier. On this side we have two conductors. On the ground side, in the red wire, we have four conductors here, but they're all connected to the same point on this side and respectively on this side. Uh, for a longer run, you would want a heavier gauge wire such as 14 or perhaps 12. Some folks prefer solid conductor wire, others prefer uh, stranded wire for flexibility. That's up to the user's choice and the conditions that they are operating under. Keeping in mind that if you've got it hung in a couple of pine trees, they can flex an awful lot in the wind, so you want a pretty strong piece of wire there. Okay, um, this antenna, as I mentioned a couple of times, is a uh, demonstration and experimental antenna. What we're going to do is use it to change configurations. Now this, this uh, dipole antenna can be set up in a number of different ways. Uh, one of them, which you saw earlier when I, when I had it up tighter, is the regular horizontal dipole configuration. Then another option is to bring one end down to the ground and attach it to a ground stake just like this. Uh, I don't have a ground stake right here at the moment, but if you scan up the antenna, you'll see that that guy's sitting at about uh, oh, a 30 degree angle or so. And this is called a sloper. Pretty basic uh, uh, name for the antenna because that's what it's doing, is it's sloping. Okay, we're back again, and we've been fiddling around with the uh, basic wires since our last, uh, since you last saw them. This configuration is in the form of a vertical antenna. You have the same length going up the pole, which is an eighth of a wave for the vertical portion of it. And then the red wires down here, we split into four different directions, approximately 90 degrees apart, 
or the ground counterpoise for the vertical antenna? Uh, the difference between a vertical antenna and a, a horizontal antenna is that the vertical usually has a lower angle of radiation, which is better for your DX work, uh, especially as the band is opening or as it's closing. Uh, the lower angle you can get on your departure uh, wave, the farther it's going to go before it starts getting reflected. Um, also, it uh, offers a nice and uh, space conservative situation. Uh, again, you can hang the top of it from a tree limb, or a, uh, you don't want it to be next to a metal tower because that's going to alter the uh, radiation pattern. But this one radiates equal in all directions if you do not use a metal pole. These poles are fiberglass and they don't conduct. Uh, at the feed point here, the hot wire goes to the vertical portion and the uh, shield wire on the coax goes to the four ground leads. I'm using wire nuts just to hold it together here for demonstration purposes and uh, you would want to solder those if you're in a permanent situation. The coax comes off at just about any angle and goes off to your transmitter, uh, no particular distance, although some folks uh, like to keep it in multiples of a wavelength or portions thereof to uh, uh, control SWR and things, but that's another whole area that I'm not going to get into here.